Welcome once again to the JLo Artist YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me on this artistic adventure. Today we'll be working with ink, pen and ink. So have your kneaded eraser, a number two or an HB pencil, handy, and any type of ink that you would like to use. But make sure that it's archival, that it's permanent, that it's black, and, uh, and a smooth ink. And let's start doing some ink drawing. First of all, look at how much water there is. That's a ton of water. I'm going to show you how to do water, and it's so easy. So don't stress about the water. Right now, what you want to do is just get simple shapes. So start out with rectangles, triangles, simple shapes, and figure out where you want to put everything. Try to make it fairly large. So for example, if I come up here and say, well, I want about a third of my page to just be water, I can put a little line there just say, okay, that's where the bottom goes. Uh, that little tower, maybe I want it off to this side just a little bit. So maybe I want that little tower about right in here. And it's fairly large. I mean, the little end maybe up to about right there. Okay. You can all draw this well. I know you can. So just... Just throw it in, simple shapes, rectangles, squares, triangles, circles, whatever. It's not important that you get all those details in. That we're going to do with the pen. That might be a little bit too big. I don't know if I could get the top part of this one in with that. So I think I've got to make that a little bit smaller. Just a little bit. There we go. Remember that as you're drawing, if you make something wrong, like I just did, then make it right and then erase what's wrong. If you erase it too quickly, you lose your reference point and... We often make the same mistake over and over because we lose our reference point. There's a whole bunch of trees back in here. You can just block those in as if they were like lollipop trees. You just want to just block in the, the space for it. Here's that one roof, just a rectangle, a little roof attached to that one that goes up there. There's the tower. I still don't have quite enough room up there. So I'm going to make... This one just a little shorter. It's all about composition, figuring out where things go. And then we start worrying about proportions and how big things are supposed to be is reference to the other things. There we go. Those little points go clear up to the top, but that's kind of where we want them anyway. You want to utilize the entire surface of your paper. And hopefully you notice I am not throwing in any kind of detail. I, I'm just trying to get angles correct, spaces, sizes, There's a bunch of trees back in the background. You can throw those in too as just little shapes. All, it's, all you're doing is saying this is where it goes. There is a ton of information in here. Lovely little spot though. If you ever get to Switzerland, I would definitely visit this little place. And the beaches are lovely on this Lake Geneva. I don't know if you guys know this, but Switzerland is, um, it's got some 
because of the Alps and the high Alps, it's got some natural um, glaciers and things. So it always looks cold. But there on Lake Geneva, you can grow oranges. It's a very moderate climate. If you want to block in when the, where the windows are, don't worry about even making them exactly square. You can just take your pencil and just shade in little spots. Say, well, there's a window there and there's a window there. We can also adjust as we go. And if you want to, um, just give yourself some guidelines. Like you can see where the reflections of the building are is in the water and just give yourself some guidelines there there's a bunch of windows along this thing i'm just going to block them in as quickly as i can this part here really you want to get this done as fast as you can because this is the not so fun part So the first thing to do is kind of pick out some of those really dark areas. Part of the really dark area is the roof. So I'm just going to start top to bottom, left to right. If you're left-handed, you may want to do it the other way. Um, it's totally up to you how you do this. But I'm just going to kind of start out with this little roof line. And I'm just going to do a little, little line there, a little roof line there. A little double line there. And then I'm just going to, um, I guess the term would be shaded in, but it's not really shading. It's more just lines. I'm just going to go back and forth because the tiles, the, the little tiles on the roof are going this way. And so that's the direction I'm going to go with that as well. So I'm just going to start out here and go back and forth. And what if I overdo my line there does that matter not really I'm going to keep this kind of fresh and sketchy it doesn't have to be really tight so just go back and forth now i know i've got to go back into it it's not near as dark as i need it on this side i can see that little tower that's there I'm going to do the same thing in there, but I'm going to just block in where that little tower goes. And I'm just going to add some little rectangles for windows. There's one there. There's one there. You can use little dots and dashes and just block those in. Notice I didn't really, I didn't really do a, a, a roof there or anything. I'm just going to leave it out. So as I come in there, same thing here, just little lines back and forth. This one's a little lighter than the other one. I'm going to leave this other little side out. There's a little roof right there, a little corner of a roof. I'm going to leave that part out and just pick up this last little triangle. It kind of looks like this. Now, let me ask you a question here. If I get rid of my graphite, do you need to have a line around this little building? Or can I just leave it like that? Yeah, this is what I was talking about. There's a lot in architecture that you can just leave out. Just leave it out. Everybody knows that edge is right there. You don't have to draw it in. So if you feel like I don't have to draw that in, everybody's going to know it, then just leave it out. When in doubt, leave it out. Anytime it's a little darker, like right here on the edge of this roof, it's a little darker there. I'm just going to go in. Do a little more line, darkens it up, 
and voila, you're done. Here's another little thing. See this little doorway that's just below that right there? I can't hardly see this other edge, so don't draw it in. Just draw this little L shape or a little 7, like that. And then maybe add a little dot or a little dash in there. And that's it. That's all you need for that doorway. If the doorway were darker, I'd add some more hatch lines to it, but it's really not. That's all you need. So windows, doorways, these little L's or 7's, that's all you need. So over here, where the little window is, I can add another one this way. There's the top part. Here's the bottom part. And it does have a little bit more in it, so I'm going to hatch through it. I'm going to hatch this way. And I'm going to hatch this way. And there's your window. Whoop, you can hardly see it. Sorry about that. So I'll do the other one here, too, while I'm there. A little seven. Hatch through it in the, the shape of the rectangle. And, then, and you're done. Little dots and dashes around it if you need it. Sometimes you can see the framework around it. And that's basically it. Underneath the eave of that roof is darker, so I'm just going to hatch through that. You can do little zigzags. You can do little circles. You can do whatever you want to, whatever you think you need to. It's a little darker there. A little darker along the edge here. And that's, that's really about it. Now, we will have to go back into it because I can see where this roof is a little darker. So I can go back into it and darken it up with just little hatch lines. And if you, if you want it to look um, kind of bumpy, let your hand kind of shake a little bit as you go back and forth. And, and that will give it some texture. Little dots and dashes, and you got it. Isn't that nice? Or somebody had drawn with me when I was learning how to draw. And that's about it. Those little finials that are up there on top, these little thin triangle shapes, you can put those in. Some dots and dashes. But above that are some little, um, they're like little uh, wind um, veins. But they, they almost look like they're hanging out all by themselves. So that's okay. Let them do that. Here's a little ball on the top. And then on top of that, a little dash, and here's that wind vein. I have no idea what it is. I'm just going to do little squiggly lines. But they, they, you don't even have to have them attached to each other because they're light and thin. And that is the roof. Now, here's a really kind of a cool thing that happens with architecture. A lot of times what you see is defined by what's behind it. So like right here in this tower, there's some trees back here defining that edge. So what I'm going to do is instead of drawing a line down here or a line down there, I'm just going to draw this tree, and where it ends, right here, I'm just going to leave it out. So here's the tree. Squiggle, 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 squiggle. Dots and dashes. And that is going to define the edge of my building. 
And it's probably a, a conifer of some type, like a pine tree. And so if you use little scratchy lines, and they all don't have to go in the same direction. You just leave them hanging out. That's a great way to do a pine tree. And sometimes you can even have little limbs or just little dots or dashes that are just hanging out up there. They're not really attached to anything. They're just hanging out. Now, we still have this edge to deal with over here. And if I got rid of my graphite there, that just cleans it all up, makes it nice. You sort of can see where your edge is going to be, where you, you sort of think, well, okay, I can kind of see where that's going to be. But on our building, there are some brick. Well, rather than draw brick, just do little dots and dashes. And look in the direction that the brick would lie. It's the same as your roof line. So look at your roof line and just do your brick in that direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back and forth, little dots and dashes. I'm going to start at this edge over here, little dots and dashes. You can go ahead and skip some too. But all that's going to do is give it some texture. So you don't have to draw every brick. You just a couple here and there. You just try to make sure it's lined up with your line below it. And if it's not, you can adjust it. This is the cool thing about this is... Um, if I drew a line, I'd be stuck with that line. But in this case, I can make it bigger or smaller by just adding more dots and lines. So I'm just going to do that whole edge. Right here, also, where the edges of this building here, you don't want to draw a line down there. Just do the same thing, little dots and dashes going in this direction. And where those little dots and dashes end, that's the edge of your building. Sometimes, if you want to, you take another piece of paper. You could lay it over that so that you have your edge there. So if, if by happenstance, you do go over the edge, then it's still nice and level. Or you can draw it with your pencil and just tell yourself, I'm not going to go over that edge. And when you're done, you can just fix whatever's there. But look how much you don't draw in there. Just leave it out. Just dots and dashes in the direction that those brick would go. Sometimes, if you've got a lot of really dark brick, you can do a little hatched line like this. That looks a little more brick-like. There's little dots and dashes. And you don't need much. I'm just going to go in and clean up those edges because I'm not very straight. But that's okay. You want you want to be a little spontaneous too. Hopefully that's easier than you thought it was going to be. So the whole surface is going to be that way. Whenever you you need brick, some of this that's down here, I don't see any brick at all. So don't put it in. Maybe a few dots here and there, but the rest of it you could kind of leave out. So try doing this roof line here on your own. I'm going to back it up a little bit so you can see what's going on in that roof. But it's done the same way we did this one up here. Okay? 
And like I say, you can block it in if you want to. There are some little dormer windows on the on that roof. Uh, the little dormer windows, those little triangles that are up there. Um, I'll show you how I do them. I just start out with little triangles like this. And they've all kind of got to be in their own little space on their own little level. So you could, if you wanted to, again, take your pencil and just give yourself a little guideline. Say, okay, they've got to be up and along this line. They've got to be at that same level. The last one is about level with this little corner here. It kind of comes in here. You can you can draw those in with your pencil if you want to. And how many are there? Five? There's one, two, three, four, and then a little space in the fifth one. There, I'm sure there's a little window in there, and so I'm just going to block that in with a little, little shadow like that. Just trying to make sure they're all about level. There's another little window up here. It's hard to see. I'm just going to throw that in. And then just back and forth. roof tiles before I get going too look far I'm going to do this other side of that tower and remember if you can't see it just leave it out here's the window little seven and then hatch through it Anything that's dark, just throw it in as shapes. So pick out triangles, rectangles, whatever you can see. And don't worry about edges. I know it's kind of weird, but you'll get used to it. Just stay with me. I'm barely touching the paper, too. That is another thing that oftentimes we do too much is pressing. We press too hard. Somehow we got to get over that pressure thing. Here's another edge of that building. That edge of that building is almost lost. You can still see it. So I'm just going to take my paper like this. I can put it over the top or I can draw a line with my pencil and just say, well, this is, this is where the edge is. I want it to get lost. I want to lose it. There's little dots and dashes and that's all you need. And this, this edge is really light, so do the same thing you did in this other one, but just less. A few little dots and dashes, and you got it. There's also a tree over here that's defining this little edge here. I might want to put that in.
You may look at it and think, I have no idea what that thing is. It, it's okay. You just draw the little shapes of dark and light. And whatever it is, it'll come through. You don't have to understand everything. If you need to use a ruler, you can use a ruler. I, I don't like the rulers because, number one, they're slower. And number two, I kind of like sometimes when the line is not as tight and crystal clear, you know. I, I like sometimes when it's just hand done. Just like our roof line, we're going to have to come back into this sometime anyway. Here's that other pine tree. Just scribble it. Scribble, 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 scribble. And they're, I'm not going in the same direction. I'm like fan shape. So like some are going this way, some are going this way, some are going this way. And then I scribble on those. Like that. So, I mean, it's kind of every which way. You, you don't. It's not all, all in one direction. And some of those limbs, just let them hang out by themselves. They don't have to attach to anything. Once you got the technique down, the style and technique, you can go pretty fast. Be uh, be sketchy with it. Just don't don't be too concerned about where everything goes. Just try to get it as close as you can, and that's all anybody can expect. A little tower was way off where I sketched it. So I'm not worried about that. I can adjust. Here's another little happy tree behind that little tower. And it's just scribbled in. It's probably, it looks more like a, oh, I was going to say a poplar, but it doesn't look like a poplar. But behind that are some fluffy little trees. Let me show you how to do fluffy little trees. 
I'm just going to zoom into this real quick and do that fluffy little tree back down there. So whenever you're doing trees, remember, leave a lot out. And you're basically going to do little M's on the top, like this, and little U's on the bottom, like this. So if, if you've got a little branch that's coming out and it's got some shadow on it, just little M's and U's, like this, you can uh, do some dots and dashes to darken them up. But that's, that's going to be the bottom. This is going to be the top. You don't want to do it everywhere, just here and there. So, for example, on this little tree that's over here, I'm just going to start out and just here's some little M's here and there. And they can just be floating in the middle of nowhere. Because, you know, trees, branches come up and they, they kind of blend into the sky in the background. Some of them get lighter, some of them get darker. That's okay. Just little M's. And, and fan them, you know, give them little rounded edges. And then as I get to the bottom, I'll do little U's. And there's a happy little fluffy tree. Now here's the base of the tree. I can't really see what's going on underneath it. So I'm just going to hatch through it with some line. Create some darkness under there. But then I'm just looking at some of the shadows, and I would want to create those shapes of the shadows. Here's those little branches over on this side, just hanging out there on top. Does that look like a fluffy little tree? You can add more to it if you want, depending on the on the tree. Sometimes they're darker, lighter. Sometimes all you need is little dots and dashes here and there. Now I'm kind of excited to get to the water, so I really want to finish this tower. Some of this base stuff and get to the water and show you how to do that. So the pieces of wood that are there, I'm just this, this is called split timber, split beam work. I'm just using little dots and dashes to define where those are. As I lived it in Germany, had the same split timber work to it, very similar to this. I'll tell you what, in the morning when you wake up and you hit your head on them, they're not very soft. We lived upstairs where all the beams were exposed. This, this is a double window, and it's got a little space in between. So I'm just going to leave that little space out. Little dots and dashes to even it out. And there you have it. Our, our little tower that we've got underneath is kind of round. So rather than go straight, just do little, 
little arches with your brick. Just little, little arched, slightly arched. More on the left side, less on the right side. This brick is darker, so I'm going to use that to define the edge of my little tower there. We're almost ready to do the water. Definitely have to go back in and do some darker edges here and there. But I wanted to get to that tower part first. Wow, there's a ton of stuff in here. I'm never going to get around to it all. But I want to show you how to do the water. Then we can spend the last 10 minutes just finishing up whatever we need to. So um, the water, a lot of people um, really fret about the water. Basically, what you do is you take your darks and then put them down here. So if, I, if you see any darks, just and water is very level it's very horizontal so when you do this you just go back and forth like this horizontally in kind of little zigzaggy shapes and you only do the dark areas and you can skip some you can just lightly let your your pen go across it and there's your water piece of cake you can do it anywhere that you see darkness so you just go back and forth You just kind of concentrate on those dark areas. You can always go back into it, too, if you think, well, it needs to go a little darker. You can do that. Here's the tree. Just back and forth. Meandering back and forth. Here's your water. And the closer you get... To the bottom of the page uh, the farther apart your little meanderings can go so if they're this wide back here then as i get to the bottom you get a little wider and less less of them because your waves are going to get bigger as they get towards you because they're closer to you so back here it'd be very narrow then as they come out you just get a little wider and a little less of them. Plus, you can you can kind of fade that out. But water is very level. It's very horizontal. So you want to keep your edges, your lines, going back and forth like this. This works well for calm water. This water is pretty calm right now.
I have no idea what's going on back in this area here. But it's dark, so I'm just going to throw it in with dark. Get rid of all your graphite. Nobody will ever know that you used your pencil to begin with. Got a couple of minutes left is all. So remember to put your name on this. A good signature is part of your composition. So a good place for it is probably right down there, either on this side or over here on this side. I'm going to put mine right there. It's just a good place for it. So there towards the end, you've, you've done a lot of drawing in here, and there's a lot of stuff that you kind of blocked in. And now you have to kind of clean it up any way you can. So really, that's what I'm doing. Just cleaning up what I got. And if we take more time, it's going to look a little bit nicer. And hopefully you've learned some things, done some things that you've never done before, and enjoyed doing it. I think that's the key. Because you're going to get good at whatever you enjoy doing. And if you enjoy doing it, you'll practice, you'll do it because you love it. And hopefully, this is going to make your life a little bit better. Because art makes life better. It just does. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for drawing with me. And I hope that you have a lovely day.